Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 19, NumPy and NDArray, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about command line argument parsing. So in this episode, I will give a quick overview of how you can do something similar as NumPy in Rust. And this is done using the NDArray crate. So NDArray for n-dimensional array. This is a known concept from NumPy actually. Um, uh, one freaky option that you have actually is in PyO3. You can use NumPy in Rust, but this is probably not the most straightforward way of uh, using and doing things. In uh, the ND array crate, you will find the documentation of how to transition from being a NumPy user over to how it works with ND array. If you want to do linear algebra, you will have to install the ND array linalg crate. This one is using existing algebra libraries that you have on your computer, like OpenBlas or the Intel MKL. And therefore, there's not much difference to your NumPy installation when it comes uh, to that. It's just a wrapper to those existing libraries. So in my examples, I will only show some uh, small simple math and one uh, eigenvector and eigenvalue computation. An interesting project, if you are a data scientist, for you could be um, weld. This is basically mixing the power of Python Rust to create um, a compiler to do big data processing in a very efficient way. The project seemed to have stalled kind of end of 2020, but it's nevertheless very interesting, so you might have uh, use for that. Let's hop over into uh, the code. As usual, on the left we have Python, on the right we have uh, Rust. In Python we use NumPy, therefore we have to import it and it's common to for people to shorten this to np because afterwards when you use the namespace it's uh, easier to read and uh, figure out what's going on in longer formulas right so to create a simple array you use the numpy array constructor with an iterable so here it's a list of python and afterwards you have your array this in this case i'm using angles in degrees i print them that's very easy to do and now if we want to compute the sign, we will have to, of course, convert them first in uh, to the radians. We're using the pi divided by 180. And you can see here that I'm actually passing this numpy array to a computation. So this expression is running the computation for every element in uh, the array. And you don't have to write the, the loops uh, yourself. And then there is a numpy function called the sign that will accept a numpy array and do the math again on every element inside this array. That is then all implemented in uh, C, C++ or Fortran in the backend and runs fairly efficiently. So normally you will not gain a lot switching from a numpy over to Rust, I imagine. Now here we create um, a three by three uh, matrix. So we first generate the numbers from 0 to 8, so a range from 2 to 9. So a range to 9, and we give it data format uh, float, and we reshape this into a 3 by 3 uh, matrix. And here again is just a simple array with all 10s. And below here, I just show that it's easy to print and do simple math, like do multiplication of every element by the factor of 2, or even add one array to another or multiply. You can also build uh, easily the average, so there's a function for that, or the mean of all the values that you find in your arrays. The same can be done in Rust, and it's not too complicated actually. Once you have uh, ND array installed successfully on your machine, you just uh, import the preload. We are using pi, so I'm getting this into our namespace. Below, we create a uh, one-dimensional array, so the data type has to be given, this is Rust, with then the data type of the elements inside your array, so it's a float with 64 bits. We use the provided the macro called array to create the array with the values that we have. Since this is Rust, we should use the point to denote that these are actually float uh, values. Printing is simple. So I'm not using the debug formatter as you can see, but it has the formatting 
implemented so you can use it just as you can here on the left on Python you just pass it to your formatting string if you want to compute the sign it works uh, slightly different so what works uh, the same way is you use your array you use the multiplication operator and then your factor so our pi divided by 180 here and um, this is done for you also automatically for every element on the array to compute the sign however we uh, map the array and we run the sign on which is implemented on uh, float 64s in the standard library of rust in order to create a 3 by 3 matrix this works uh, the other way around uh, written because we start with uh, which uh, shape you want to have here right so from shape back you have to provide the shape you want and the second argument is then your array so the one dimensional array of the range going from 0 to 9 by a step of 1 is converted to a vector and then this one will build it here we have it uh, written another, another way where we build the range and then we reshape it then we build a simple array again using the macro as we did before so what changes now here in printing is of course the borrowing of the values since uh, I want to use A and B for the computations further down, I cannot move them to the print line. They have to be borrowed, so that's why we use the ampersand in the front. Here I have a small comment that explains that the ampersand is actually more than just an immutable borrow. It is actually creating an array view that is uh, fairly efficient and lets you look into the values of that thing. And uh, for this array view, all those operators are implemented as well. So I can actually do this ampersand a times a factor and it will run the math just as it does here on the left. So there's not too much uh, difference in how you can do your computations. Same is true for adding two arrays and uh, do the multiplication. Simple operations like building the average is actually provided by NumPy in convenience functions. For some reason, uh, the developers of ND array didn't feel like this is not imp important to implement. So average you have to do yourself, uh, you build the sum, you divide by the length. Not hard to do, but the convenience is kind of missing. The mean is implemented, so all you have to do is call the method mean on your array. And this can fail, so therefore we have to unwrap the computation. And that concludes the difference. You can see from left to right there's not too much difference and how this is uh, used. So it should be fairly straightforward, especially when you read the document that helps you migrating from NumPy over to an array. Let's quickly um, run this code to see if um, the results are kind of close and the same. So if we run cargo run release, then we get some results and we can do the Python simple and we also get some results. What you can uh, quickly see is the formatting of the output is different. So a NumPy array will, a NumPy array will show up without uh, commas. And here we have commas to denote the uh, separate elements in your vector or array. Then NumPy is uh, nicer formatting the things. Here you can see we get all long kinds of numbers by default. Otherwise, the matrices look uh, kind of the same, right? We have our 3x3 three three matrix and the math, like multiplication by 2, for example, yields the same results, like 0, 2, 4 and stuff. A plus B works out as well, so we go 10, 11, 12. And then A times uh, B, same thing, so 0, 10, 20 works out fine. The average is built exactly the same and the mean as well. Let's hop over to an example that uh, does some uh, small time uh, linear algebra. So we have and you can run uh, the NumPy linalg eigen, uh, you can see here, to compute the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Just you by importing NumPy, this is a submodule, and you use this function and uh, you're all set. In Rust, you will have to import and first install all the dependencies necessary to run uh, NDRE Linalg. Once you've done that, you have access to a method that it will be attached to your array 
called egg, and this does the same computation. But you can see there's not too much difference. Here we return a tuple and we get our eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, and the same works here on the left in Python. There's not too much difference. Printing is what we already saw in the code before. Now we want to convert this to a complex uh, type. So what we can do in Python is we use uh, the array's name or the matrix's name as type, and then we can pass um, a conversion function to it. In this case, uh, we will pass a pointer to complex. And in Rust, this is done by mapping again. So we take our array, we map over every value complex 64 bits, and uh, we use the constructor to pass the float and uh, we initialize with zero for the imaginary part. Afterwards, we can actually do the dot product fairly easily by calling uh, our newly S type uh, matrix with complex values inside dot the vectors that we've computed. And uh, same thing we do here. So code looks the same, except again for the mutable borrow below printing as we had it already. Let's run this code and see if we get the same results again. We should, but you never know. So we have to cargo run release, but this time example again vector. This works apparently. Let's hop over and see if Python again vector works. Yes, it does. Here you can see the big difference again. NumPy makes uh, the printout by default fairly readable and uh, very concise, right? The imaginary part is denoted by the J and it uh, leaves some space in order to understand uh, this is one value, this is the second value, this is the third one. The Rust uh, default debug output will show you that this is a complex with a real part, imaginary part, and therefore this becomes uh, very hard to read after a while. What we can try though is change the code to not show the debug output. We might get a nicer output this way. Let's uh, quickly do that. So now we get the easier to read output. It's uh, still harder to read than the nice Python output but we are getting there. So we have here an I for imaginary instead of a J and we have commas to denote one value coming after another. The results kind of look uh, promising. So we have 2.5 with 1.65. So we have that here. Then we have the same 2.5 with minus 60, 165. This we have uh, here and we have uh, three plus uh, zero. And here we can see that we have this one two in our eigenvalues computed. This has to be read uh, column wise, as you likely know. So we have here eigenvalue, and then this would be the corresponding eigenvector. These should then also correspond. Now we have to, of course, jump. So for the minus uh, three result, this is the third column on our Rust result and the first column in our Python result. So minus uh, three gets uh, 0.3 two times and minus 0.9. Let's see if that's true. So we have the 0.3 here, 0.3 here, and 0.9 here. So the math uh, seems to work out actually. Dot product, we should have a similar result. So again, we can verify here the first column against uh, the last one on uh, the other. So we end up with uh, 0.9 something, which is here, 0.9 something, 0.9 something, and uh, 2.7. Seven. Looks good uh, to me. So linear algebra can be done as well. Fairly straightforward. The hard part is uh, setting up all the dependencies and getting them to work with NDRA Linalg. So you have definitely a com uh, comfort advantage using NumPy. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be logging.